An aircraft carrier may have more than 5,000 sailors on board. To feed all the sailors on an aircraft carrier, more than 17,000 meals must be prepared daily. There are more than 100 cooks on board, which seems like a culinary miracle. But is it? How are the meals prepared for such a large number of sailors? When the ship first starts its deployment, there is a lot of fresh food on board. As the weeks go by and the fresh food continues to become more and more depleted, frozen or canned food may be used. But that doesn't mean that the sailors won't get any fresh food at all. The ship has what it's called an underway replenishment. The replenishment ship has a lot of fresh food on board that is delivered to the aircraft carrier while it is at sea and underway and the crew starts the cycle all over again. Also, when the ship enters port, it usually has fresh food ready to be stored for the crew. About 17,000 meals are produced daily by around 93 culinary specialist staff. These meals range from breakfasts served at 6 a.m. to midnight rations. Planning is essential to accomplish this goal. The ship's cooks adhere to a menu cycle that lasts for 15 days and receive resupplies at sea once every week, including both dry and fresh commodities. The 5,000 crew aboard an aircraft carrier can consume 1,600 pounds of chicken, 160 gallons of milk, 30 cases of cereal, and 350 pounds of lettuce in a single day. Everything is produced in enormous quantities. Cooks are required to constantly prepare meals, do various activities, and undergo training to learn new responsibilities. All galleys on a carrier are sufficiently supplied. After every seven to 10 days, a supply ship will bring between 400,000 and a million pounds of food. When there is a need for variation in the deliveries, it's not uncommon for regional foods to be included, such as feta cheese from Greece. The Navy plans its meals for the next 15 days in advance. They consist of meals designed to increase sailors' morale, such as Taco Tuesday and Mongolian Grill. They make it a point to ensure that each meal is cooked to a high standard, ensuring that the sailors can enjoy a satisfying meal even when they're thousands of miles from their homes. The degree to which a culinary specialist excels at their work directly affects the morale of a ship's crew and the quality of living they enjoy on board. When a sailor is stationed at sea and their birthday falls within a given calendar month, they are given a celebratory lunch with a prime rib or lobster main course, complete with a tablecloth, wine glasses, and pleasant background music. Let's talk about how these culinary specialists can make such a huge volume of food daily. A Navy culinary specialist's life requires a sailor willing to put in hard labor and not afraid to get their hands dirty or work unusual and long hours. They get up every day at three in the morning to prepare breakfast, which must be ready by six in the morning. Additionally, time management is a vital skill for Navy culinary specialists. They place the utmost importance on effective time management. They must ensure that every minute is productive if they want to keep up with the demand of making thousands of meals daily. Additionally, there are a variety of responsibilities that fall within each culinary specialist's purview. Even if they have a lot of different responsibilities to fulfill, the food still needs to be prepared correctly and served on time. But life for culinary experts has been made easier since modern aircraft carriers' galleys have been constructed in such a way that cooking will be done easily. For example, let's look at how the USS Gerald R. Ford galley is constructed and how it operates. The USS Gerald R. Ford is the newest aircraft carrier built by the United States. The galleys that Ford uses are modeled after those found on board ships of the San Antonio class amphibious transport dock, a design that has shown to be highly effective in the past. Only two galleys are in operation on aircraft carriers of the Ford class. Both the supply department at Ford and the food service division were tasked with developing standard operating procedures for running both the conglomerate galleys simultaneously so that they could feed the crew and provide support for CVW-8. The meals are served to the crew, chiefs, and officers from three adjacent sides in a centralized galley located in the rear of the aircraft. Because the meal's components come from the same source and are being prepared by the same cooks, serving many lines of food from a single galley ensures that the meal will be consistent throughout. 
It discourages the preparation of special meals for the various messes while at the same time improving the overall quality of the crew's meals. Both of the ship's kitchens are arranged along the ship's centerline, and they are serviced by pallet-capable elevators positioned above palletized cold, dry, and frozen storage areas. The food service cargo team can easily break out, freeze, chill, and dry supplies with a reasonably small team because this vertical integration features storerooms right beneath the galley. Vertical integration not only drastically reduces the need for huge working teams consisting of 50 to 100 people to support cargo movements, but also makes it possible for the food service division to function without interfering with the ship's regular operations. Food has consistently been regarded as one of the most significant aspects of service in the United States Navy. Early on, a good meal was an important factor in recruitment. Sailors wanted to know that they would be fed well, which was a huge issue in early America because the food was not nearly as diverse as our eating habits are today. So sailors needed to know that they would be well nourished. Sailors who worked on labor-intensive sailing ships burnt more than 4,000 calories daily due to the job's physical demands. The crew's health was another reason food was so essential. After all, if a crew isn't feeling well, they won't be able to carry out their responsibilities. The crews that served aboard ships in the United States Navy were organized into messes. What does this mean? Sailors would congregate in the same living quarters and eat their meals together. This allowed the chef to prepare food freshly for each mess. As ships became more technologically advanced, so did the system and reasoning behind feeding the crew. Messes continued to serve as the fundamental unit for the provision of food to groups of service members, but their size and scope expanded along with the expansion of new ships. The several departments on board the modern ships had messes such as navigation, gunnery, engineering, deck force, etc. There are gyms in the hangar bay to work off the food. This is also important so that the sailors maintain good fitness. It's quite an organization to take care of all the sailors on board. But in general, it is very well taken care of on an aircraft carrier. Let us know what your experiences as a sailor are with eating on an aircraft carrier. That'll be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Let us know what you think of the topic in the comments. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.